Hi guys, so we're going to look at proof now. I know proofs are horrible and annoying, but there is some things they tend to be quite formulaic and there tends to be a strategy to each type of one. So let's have a look at the proof questions. Okay, right, we're going to ignore the first one. It's done for us. We're not worried about that one. Whenever we have a quadratic and we want to prove that it's always positive or something always does or doesn't happen to it, we're going to complete the square. So remember, you take whatever's in front of the x and half it. So you'll get x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus 10. So that's going to give you x minus 3 squared plus 1, which we know is always true because a square number is always positive. So then if you add one to it, it's definitely always going to be positive. So you can deduce it's always true and your proof can be your completed and square, but you could write it like this. It's greater than or equal to zero as square number. Therefore, x minus three squared plus one is always greater than or equal to one. So therefore greater than or equal to zero. So always positive. And then we've got if AX is greater than B, then X is greater than B over A. Now, you could pick some numbers and think about it. So say, okay, if A is a positive number, then yeah, when I divide it, it works fine. But if A is greater than zero, then x is greater than b over a. But if a is less than zero, when you divide by a negative number, you flip the sign. So actually, you're going to end up with x is less than b over a. So therefore, it's sometimes true. The difference between consecutive square numbers is odd. OK, so let's take as number n squared. And the next one along, okay, so n, and the next one along would be n plus one. We want the difference between them. So we'll get n squared plus 2n plus 1 minus n squared, which is 2n plus 1. And that's always going to be odd because it's an even one plus one. So therefore, this is always true. So you'll have even plus one equals odd. Okay, that was a bit of a strange question, but. Remember, you're only ever, I know you're doing a whole page of them, but you're only ever going to get, you know, one proof question. The clue is usually in the amount of marks it is. So here it's saying to disprove by counterexample just means you need to pick some numbers. So if M and N are irrational numbers, MN is also irrational. OK, so an irrational number is like a square number, square root number. So let's think, um, take any square root number to start with. Let's say let m equal root 3. And I want to think of something that when I times by 3 gives me an exact square. So um, I could do 6 squared, which is 36. So then n could be root 12, which is also irrational because it doesn't but mn equals root three times root 12, which equals root 36, which equals six. And that would be your counterexample. Um, and you probably have to write, you need to write a sentence that say six is not irrational, or you could write six is rational as can be seen. Proof by contradictions are that Elsa's claim is true. So when you have a proof by contradiction, the first thing you have to do is write the negation. And that in itself is worth a mark. So we're going to assume that if n squared is even, then n is odd. So when you've got an a then b, your negation is still if A, then not B. So the if bit doesn't change, right? So we're saying N is odd. So let's take N to be odd. 
So n equals 2x plus 1. Because remember, an odd number is always an even number plus 1. You could do minus 1. And then we're going to do n squared, which gives us 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. And we can take 2 outside the bracket, 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is two, 1 more than even, so odd. And then so um, Elsa's claim. Elsa's claim is true. Or by proof by, if it was more, or by proof by contradiction, Elsa's claim is true. Okay. Bobby claims that e to the 3x is greater than or equal to e to the 2x. Okay. Nearly, so my other hint is nearly always, when they say always, sometimes, or never, Nearly always it's sometimes. So you're looking for some examples that work and some that don't. And the way I think about it is in some cases, even and odd would make sense, but sometimes positive and negative. So let's think about it. Let's take, you know, when X equals, just take any number to start with. So say when X equals one, E to the three is greater than E to the two. Okay, but when x equals minus one, we're gonna get e to the minus three. And if you're not sure what it is, you can put it in your calculator, but you'll get which equals 0 0.04 something and e to the minus two, which is 0 0.135. So you'll say e to the three is not, minus three is not greater than e to the minus two, therefore sometimes true. So for sometimes true, you have to show when it is true and when it isn't true. Right, question five. Prove that for all n, Okay, so there's a few ways to do this. Um, and I would say all natural numbers, you can assume that um, they can be odd or even. So you can do it, the, num the marks are four. So that's telling you, you're probably gonna need an algebraic proof. So if you've got an even number, then you will have so you say, let n be even. So n equals 2m. So then n squared plus 2 equals 2m all squared plus 2, which is 4m squared plus 2, um, which is 2 more than, um, than multiple of 4 of four, so not divisible by four. And if n is odd, you'll get n equals 2m plus one. So 2m plus one squared is going to give you four m plus two, four m squared plus four m plus one plus two, which is three more then a multiple of four, so it's not divisible by four. Um, so that would be a way to do it. And then you'd say, therefore, all natural numbers are not divisible. Okay, so this is question six is one of those stand proofs that's in your textbook. Um, surprised it's here, but let's think about what a geometric sequence is. So the sum of a sequence is the first term plus the second term plus the third term, and then you keep going until you get to r n minus one. So that's just your definition. So the way I would do this is I'd write down the answer at the bottom. A one minus, in order to remember it, multiply that up. So you've got Sn one minus r, r to the n. So this is how I would remember it. Take your answer, multiply up, 
you've got Sn minus Rsn is A minus AR to the N. So then here we're going to have Rsn, which is multiplying them all by R. So AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed plus dot, 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 plus AR to the N. I'm going to call this number one and this two, and this is one minus two. You can see everything cancels out and you end up with a proof. So this is one of the standard proofs. They don't tend to test it much because it is just book work, but you never know. It could come up. It used to come up in the old spec quite a lot. Right, question seven. Prove by contradiction. So again, we've got a contradiction. So straight away, we're going to come up with our negation. So it's not quite an opposite, but it's like thinking about the opposite, right? So there are no positive integers. So we're not going to say that all positive integers, we're just going to say there exists. Um, I don't know whether I've got enough space there. We'll do that here. So there exists. So this is question seven. Positive integers. A and B such that A plus 2B equals root 8AB um, and A is odd. So that's, that's just a given. So then I look at it and I go, okay, the square root, maybe I square both sides, see what happens. So if I just square both sides, that's going to give me a squared plus 4ab plus 4b squared equals 8ab. Put everything onto one side. I'm going to get 8 squared minus 4ab plus 4b squared um, equals zero. And hopefully you may recognize that if you take the square root of the first one, you get a square root of the last one, you've got 2b. If you put a minus in the middle, that's exactly right. So if that equals zero, then you're gonna end up with, sorry, I'm gonna write it here, A equals two B. And this is a contradiction because if A is even, A has to be even, not odd, because you've got two B. So anything multiplied by two is an even number. So you'd say this, is a contradiction as a is even, hence assumption false. And then you just rewrite the question. So there are no positive integers a and b with a odd, such that. Prove by contradiction that there are no positive integers p and q such that 2p squared minus q squared equals two to the, oh, okay, so there's a typo here. I don't know whether it's fixed in whatever you've seen, but that should say 25. So step one, you will say there are positive integers such that this can happen. So there are positive integers P and Q such that 4P squared minus Q squared equals 25. We're going to factorise that. Hopefully you see it's like a difference of two squares. And we think, how can we get 25? Well, the only ways to get 25 are 25 and 1 or 5 and 5. So we could say 2P plus Q equals 25. 2P minus Q equals 1. And when you solve that P and Q, you get P is 6.5 and Q is 12. Or you say 2P plus Q equals 5, 2P minus Q equals 5, and you end up with P equals 2.5 and Q equals 0. And you'd say in both these cases, both P and Q are not positive integers, so whole numbers. Therefore, this is a contradiction. Okay. Question nine. Use algebra to prove that the square of any natural number is either a multiple of three 
or one more than a multiple of three. So because we're not thinking of evens and odds, we're now thinking of multiples of three, we have to consider all numbers are either going to be, say, 3k, or 3k plus one, or 3k plus two. Because the minute we make it 3k plus three, is the same as 3k with another k. You could have done minus one as well. And we're going to prove that the square of these is either a multiple three or one more. So we take each single one and we square it. So 3k squared, which gives you 9k squared. And you'd say this is a multiple of three. Oh, you could have written three times just to make it super clear. And then you've got 3k plus 1 squared, which is 9k squared plus 6k plus 1, which we take 3 outside the bracket. So this is one more than multiple of 3. Multiple of 3. And then you could take 3k plus 2 squared. Open that out, so you get 9k squared plus 12k plus 4. Take 3 outside the bracket again. 4k plus 1, and then you get plus 1, which is one more than a multiple of 3. And then you said you've proved it for every single natural number that you have a multiple of 3 for. Sorry, that's really rushed. It's, what, 3.20 in the morning, and I'm starting to fall asleep. So this is the last one for tonight. Um, I'll try look at the sequences and series and the stats tomorrow. Um, hopefully that's not too late for all of you.